Hi everyone, okay, so here is the card. Um, I kind of went really big with this one. It's about, well it is about six and a half by seven and a half inches. Um, I made the envelope using my uh, We Are Memory Keepers 123 punch board. If you make a lot of cards, I really can't recommend that uh, tool enough. It's just so super helpful um, and really, really useful. Um, but here's the card in action. So take it out of the envelope, folding completely flat, and then all of the goodness uh, comes out. So you can see um, we've got some embellishments on the front, in the center, and towards the back as well. And then we've got on the flaps um, just some embellishments also. Um, I've got some plain paper on the front and also a nice area on the back where you can write your sentiment. Of course, you can have the Cricut write that for you as well. So this file is available um, on the page if you search my name and Valentine's day or box card you'll see the f um, the file that's available to you what i have done i'll talk a little bit about it this when we put it together but i have included um, a plain insert that you can certainly use to um, add any embellishments that you wanted to this card all of these files are pretty much from um, or they're all from design space, I've got Cricut Access, but certainly you can um, use your own free files if you've got or where you've downloaded or purchased them from anywhere else. And the actual frame of the card, the box itself, and again that insert I've included, is 100% uh, free. So I hope you have fun um, either making this card or making your own creations. Um, obviously if you do, I'd love to see them on the page as well. So let's get started. So we have a look at all the pieces. There's quite a few. We've got the box structure itself. I've used cardstock from Divine Blanks, their Shimmer cardstock. So if you're interested in that, you can jump on their Facebook group. Um, it's got the tabs across the top, of course, um, where we're gonna add the embellishments, and then it's going to fold together um, to create the box shape. In addition to that, I've got two inserts. This one here for the first heart shape towards the front and this second piece, which goes in the back. Um, what I do like to do with my um, inserts, and you can see in the file, there's a blue one, which is effectively just this long, straight rectangular piece. Um, that you can embellish as, as you see fit. But typically what I do is once I've kind of constructed in my mind and in design space how it's gonna look, I do like to kind of select all of those shapes, um, duplicate, weld, and then that gives me the opportunity to um, then weld um, a back support piece to the insert. And that just helps it provide some structure and makes it so that, you know, it can stand up and it's not gonna, you know, flip-flop or um, get too messed up in the post or anything strange like that. So that's something that I do, but absolutely, again, with that plain rectangle insert that's included in the file, you can just glue um, whatever elements and embellishments that you want to to that structure. In addition to that, we've got some panels for the, um, for the back of the card and also um, the outside flaps. I have a plain white piece that I'm using for the back of the card where we'll attach the nice pink heart, but also um, there's plenty of room there to write a sentiment, or again, you can get your Cricut to do that for you. Um, lots of other pieces that I'm not gonna go into too much detail at this stage, um, but we'll start gluing those together and you can see all of that in action. But I just, just wanna call out a couple of um, a couple of things that I was just super impressed with with these um, files that I got from uh, Design Space. So here you can see this heart shape that's been cut out. Um, this is the Shimmer cardstock as well, but you can actually see where the Cricut has drawn that really cool pattern um, on the perimeter, which just makes it look super lovely. 
In addition to that, there are some other embellishments that I cut out, which was super fine. This is so dainty, and you can see not only did the Cricut cut it out, um, but it also drew uh, on that design as well before it uh, cut. So that was really great. With these smaller pieces, I did use a green mat, not a brand new one, but one that was quite sticky, just to make sure the pieces um, didn't, uh, they did, were stuck down nicely so it could cut these really fine details. And again, here's another example where the Cricut has drawn as well. Um, so lots of other little small pieces and lastly before we start gluing it together just some more panel pieces for the outside perimeter on the bottom of the box so that's all the pieces this is um, this cardstock is just a paper pad that I picked up at spotlight a lot of these um, sort of non pink non uh, shimmer cardstock pieces so the reds um, the dark reds the brighter reds they are a combination of AC cardstock and also some of the Kmart cardstock pads that are available and they work absolutely fine so I wouldn't be bothered at all by those. So what I'm going to do now is I will speed up the video because I don't want to bore you to tears while I put um, a lot of these smaller pieces together um, and then we'll come together again. I'll slow it down so that we can look at the construction of the box itself and a few other tips along the way. So first up I'm going to attach these panels. I've got my ATG gun which I find works best or just a tape runner. Um, this is a, is a beast as you can see but super useful if you're doing a lot of cards. Um, can be a little bit tricky to find in Australia particularly in store but if you've got a local scrapbooking store or if you look on craft online I believe they have them in stock and again if you're doing a lot of cards super, ha super handy to have. So let's stick these together. Put that on there, and then we'll do the outside flaps. So making sure that we're getting the outside pieces in the right direction, because um, obviously the box is going to be like this. So we want to make sure that we get them up the right way. If it is directional, if it's not directional, then you don't need to worry. Um, I've certainly made that mistake myself. And now you can see the box itself. You can start to imagine what it's going to look like um, once it's all uh, glued together. With the final piece that's going to ultimately go in the back of the box, I just wait to the very end to pop that in. And the reason being that it can just hide the, um, that final tab that's going to be glued when the, together when the box is closed. Um, um, around here so that tab will be inside and we can just use this piece to insert and just hide that as well okay so I'll just move that out the way that piece so well. in terms of glue for the liquid glue this is the one that I use all the time it's scotch um, tacky glue uh, can be again tricky to find in Australia so jump online maybe um, you could use uh, Try Craft Online, Try Amazon. I always get friends that are in the US or in Canada to pick me up um, a bottle for me, which is fantastic. 
I also put that into one of these small fine tip applicators. Um, these I've actually seen at uh, Lincraft. I think you can get a pack of three for you know a handful of dollars, not much at all, and that just gives me a lot of fine detail um, when I'm trying to glue fine pieces together. So let's start gluing together. So get some glue on the back here. Take a bit of time to make sure you're lining up and getting your, if there is meant to be a bit of an outline around the side for that layered effect. Take a moment to line it up. So press that down nice and firmly and let that dry. Um, here we are going to glue on another fine detailed piece. So this is actually going to go on top of the red. Um, and this is what I do. So hopefully you can see this um, clearly. I might try and hold it and bring it up a little bit. Um, but effectively I just put little dots around. And this is why the fine applicator is really good. Just on all the corner pieces. A little bit on the edge as well. Um, the Zig Glue Way Pen, Two Way Pen, is really good for this as well because it's really fine and really detailed and lets you get into all those fine spots. Um, you can see I'm not that obsessive with glue. I just want it to adhere. Um, I've not had any complaints from any recipients so far. So we'll just pop that on there as well. The other good thing about this Scotch Tacky is that it does dry clear as well. So if I make a mistake, um, it's not going to be visible once it has dried. So you can see now I'm changing my fingers as I'm pressing down. The reason that I do that is because if there is any glue seeping through, I'm trying to avoid transferring it onto um, the cardstock itself. And that's really handy if you're using glitter as well because glitter um, cardstock, if you do get glue on it, tends to stain a little bit. But there you can see that's ready to go on the back panel of my card. And for that, I'm just gonna use my ATG gun. And there's my sentiment panel ready to be glued on the back. Simple as um, that. I'm just going to glue some of these other pieces together. These two, they do go together, but this one just um, is going to be glued flat onto the t um, one of the flaps, and this piece I'll pop up with some foam dots on the side as well. So that's that's basically done. So I can move that so aside. This piece is going to be layered onto the red. So I just want to make sure we've got it in the right way around. Make sure I'm gluing the right pieces. Yep, so that's the front, and that red piece is going to glue glued onto this darker red. So that's going to work well. Apply some glue. Again, you can see here I'm being pretty not too fussed about it. Again, I just want it to stick to the other pieces. Put it down. That's done, and then we get this more fine piece. And again, I'm just going to put lots of little dots along the place. You could probably take a bit more time to get yours absolutely perfect, but for the sake of showing you how it's done, I'm not going to be that fussy. So all the way around, make sure we get every one of these roses with some glue, so it's going to be attached to some extent. And flip that over, and just take a moment to line it up. The other good thing about the liquid glue for these types of projects is that it does give you a little bit of wiggle room as well. So if you make a mistake, you can easily sort of move 
um, the two pieces that you've glued together before the glue sets. But there we go. That's going to be this one of the um, middle pieces that's going to get glued onto um, one of the inserts, which is this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now as well. Let's make sure I've got it around the right way. That's perfect. Again, let's glue around. Line that up. Perfect. And you can see that's quite a lot of layers of cardstock. So having that welded piece on the back just gives it that real sturdiness. So it's not floppy at all. It's going to stand up nice and straight um, for you know for some time to come. So that's that insert completely finished. So I'll move that aside as um, well. Next up, if we go to the rows, so. Um, this again is a really sweet um, embellishment. It had a lot of detail also. So I'll just find all of the pieces. So I've got this one, this piece, and I should have somewhere. Another embellishment which I cannot find. Let me just see if I can find it. Oh, here it is on the floor. So again, a really nice embellishment where the cricket has drawn the outline and then cut this beautifully detailed shape um, that's gonna get layered on top. So just make sure we've got everything around the right way and then we'll just glue these pieces together just like we did before. A bit of glue on the light pink. So you stick that to the red. And then once again, just dobs of glue, dots of glue all the way around. Get some on these fine pieces also. Make sure they stick down and they don't get caught. I'm happy with that. And on it goes. So again, just dabbing down and moving my fingers or my thumbs. So I'm not transferring all that glue anywhere or smudging the pen lines or anything like that. And there's a little rose that will also go on one of the flaps. And we get to the fun part, which is this monstrosity that I created um, for, the in, for the main insert. Um, I didn't mean for it to go a bit sort of crazy. I just really got all excited and just wanted to, um, uh, you know, kind of see how sort of big I could go, I suppose. Um, the one thing to note, and I'll just bring this box forward um, now, is that with these cards, Effectively, what you want to see is um, when they fold flat, everything obviously moves in a particular direction. So typically, I wouldn't have everything sort of poking up to the top or too far on the right. But as you can see, based on the way that it's closing, um, on the back panel, the back piece here, you can go further to the from the right because as it closes, these pieces will be hidden by the flaps. Yeah. What you wouldn't want to have is too much coming out from the left here, because when it closed, you would have all of this bulk out uh, on the left-hand side and sort of out of the um, proportions with the card. So that's just something to bear in mind. And then, of course, as you go in the middle, you can go a little bit more to the left, because as it closes, that's getting drawn into the middle of the card as well. And also you can go not as far out to the right because again, as it closes, um, you're a little bit more further forward. So therefore you're going further to the perimeter, closer to the perimeter. So just try and bear that in mind. It is something that it takes a while to get your head around, um, but once you've made a few and mastered it, um, you'll be all over it. So you'll, and you'll be an expert in no time. All right, so the middle piece. 
there's a lot going on here. So first of all, I have this plain pink heart that I'm going to pop down. I'll just use liquid glue for that one. And there really is identical shimmer cardstock. I also have this uh, lighter pink heart, which is going to go down uh, more to the bottom here. So again, I'm going to use liquid glue. Uh, on the front, we've got a panel that says, I adore you. So what I'm going to do here is, um, here are the pieces. So I've got a, sort of a dark pink. Uh, I've got a, a light pink and then this piece is going to go over the top of that and in the middle will be the word adore with a little love heart and I'm going to show you a little tip on how I put those fine pieces in. So I'm just going to glue these together first. This piece again lots of dots right. that goes over the pink down okay so a really handy tip for when you're placing particularly if you've got a detailed layer piece as well this is really useful what I did was I actually kept the negative space so this is a piece that effectively I was going I would have thrown away that it cut out but in order to enable me to place these letters really perfectly what I can do is I can slot in this negative piece again all right. And I can use that as basically a mask or a template in terms of where I'm going to place my letters. So these letters are super detailed. Let me just get those. You can see how tiny and fine they are. So I'm just going to lay those out in the right order. So O, D, A, D rather, O, R and E and what I am going to do as well is I do have this um, silhouette pick me up tool which I picked up off craft offline online so it does have a sort of a sharp pokey end which I'm not really sure what that's for but the really useful piece is the sticky end so it just enables me to pick up really fine pieces and place them accordingly without having to fiddle around with them with my fingers so that's quite useful in this regard as well so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place some glue um, some little dabs of glue roughly where those letters are going to go really gently little bits of glue Again, it'll dry clear so I don't need to be too fussy. I just want to make sure when I put it down, it's going to stick. So you can imagine doing this with, um, you know, if you've got lots of different colored pieces of cardstock and you want to make sure that the placement is perfect so that it actually goes together well. Um, this is super handy. You'll notice I'm putting my lid back on my glue each time and that's just so um, that fine tip doesn't get, um, doesn't dry out. So let's place the letters now. Let's pick them up and pop them in. Well, glue that down. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to use my weeding tool just to pick up this edge and then just slowly and gently remove that negative space again 
can be a little bit tricky sometimes. It might want to pull up some of your letters. So you're just going to be a little bit gentle. Hopefully it will pull up like that. And there you have it. It's perfectly placed. I adore you. And then I can put a tiny little blob of glue in the middle of the O. And I will place my little heart that I have here in the middle. Oh, here, I'm going to move it around a little bit. Oops. Let's stick that down. There we go. Super cute. So that's the embellishment that's going to go on the front. Okay, so I'm just going to move this to the side. I'm just going to complete some of these other embellishments. So get my glue. Once again, nice little dots. On the side. That onto this piece. And then the center. that piece done and now we can construct the rest of this so my glue this is handy if your glue gets gunked up and the needle get a good wiggle heart which is going just on here the purple one's gonna go here I've got my handy dandy pickup tool and just squish that down And we'll put on some of these other embellishments. So this big one goes on first. You can take a bit more care with your glue application if you wish. You can see I just moved that a little bit because with the liquid glue we've got that flexibility. And this purpley one. Here. Move that a little bit as well. Okay, and then I'm just going to put some glue directly on here. And I've got this purple one to go. Okay, so that's almost done. We'll just add this red piece okay and that's the center insert all done or the back center insert so I'll pop that aside 
And then we'll just finish off this. I did lose one of the small hearts. I cannot find it anywhere, so we'll have to do without that. Um, but I'll pop this little pink one here. And that's just going to get glued onto the very front of the box card. All right, so now we're going to construct the box card, and I'm going to give you a couple of um, tips on how I do that. So just with the, the box frame, so just making sure the score lines are all folded nicely. I did use the scoring wheel for this cardstock because it is quite thick, but you could certainly achieve um, a good result with the um, stylus either in the Maker or even in the, um, the Air 2 machines or the Explore machines. So what I like to do with my inserts is of course fold the back piece, I fold the tabs to the back and with the insert that's towards the front I fold the inserts forward towards the front and what you'll see in a lot of cases when people are gluing these boxes together is they'll have the box as a structure let's pretend this is together and then they'll manually glue the inserts in and hold them and let them dry. But what I've found is if I lay this flat and I take my back insert, and it takes a while to get your head around this as well, again when you've done a lot um, you work it out. I don't know if you've seen, if you search my name in Cricut Fail in the group you'll see one where I've completely mucked it up and got it the wrong way around. But this is the back of the card. So this piece here, I'm just going to line it up so that the top of the rectangular insert lines up with the flaps of the card and also this back tab lines up with the back score line here. Okay, then I'm going to flip it over, apply some glue, and then I'm going to just fold it over and hold that down until it started to dry. Okay, and now very carefully I'm just going to open this up, just fold that back, and then I'm just going to fold it back the other way. Okay, so that piece is glued on, and now I'm going to get my front insert, and what I'm going to do is this is the front of the card. Okay, so again just lining up the top of the rectangular piece with the top of the score line along here and this flap is going to finish at the score line from the front of the card. Then I'm going to fold that over, apply some glue and then fold it back and let that dry. All right, next what I'm going to do is this flap I'm going to fold forward. This one remains back, but I'm just going to apply some glue to both of these areas. And then all I need to do is fold the other half of my card completely over, making sure the bottom is lined up on the card. And what that's going to do is that will actually glue those perfectly in place in the right spot. And also now I know my card is going to fold perfectly flat because often if you're gluing them in while the box um, has already been constructed, you'll find when you go to fold it up, they often don't fold flat. So hopefully now when I lift it up, you can see the inserts are there perfectly. We haven't glued the back on but the inserts are in there perfectly and the structure is going to be exactly as we want. And again, when we go to fold it flat, it's going to fold perfectly flat, no issues. So that's another, that's a little tip. Next we've got to fold the, the glue the, the back together. So just open that up a little bit. Make sure that's folded properly. Apply some glue along the tab. Here I'm just going to smooth this one out a little bit just to make sure I've got good coverage. 
And then just folding the tab in, again lining up the bottom of the card to make sure it's perfectly aligned and just apply some pressure and let that dry. And now we have our box perfectly constructed and it flaps there and it folds nice and flat and it's going to be perfect. So that's a nice little tip for you. Okay, now that we've done that we can insert or glue in the back panel which is going to go back here. So I'm just going to tip that on its side and actually I'm going to go around this, this way. Get my back panel and apply some glue, my ATG gun. It's just easier sometimes when you've got a lot of bulk in the card to do this this way. So I'm just going to feed that up at the very bottom. Hold it flat to apply some pressure. And now that's in there and it's going to hide that little tab that we've used to glue it together. And then you can see it in the back there now all applied. So there we go. So that's the structure of the box. So the next thing we need to do is apply our back panel for our sentiment. So I've got that here. So that's now on the back of the card. And then we can also apply the front embellishment right here to the very front of the card. So that was this piece here. So I'm just going to apply some glue across the bottom and across here where I know it'll be um, hidden by the front of the card. So let's pop that on. So that's the front piece done and now we'll add on our embellishments to the side. So I'm just going to move that forward or back rather and we'll take our embellishments that we're going to apply. I've got some, one for the right, one for the front and one for the other side. Um, to do this I'm going to use foam squares, so pretty self-explanatory. Just pop some of those on there. I love dimension. You see most of my cards have all got some dimension if possible. So I can prop it up, sometimes multiple layers. Um, this piece, only the heart is going to be propped up and you can see it's got a nice little sentiment that the cricket wrote on there as well. So without further ado, let's add these on. So I've got nails so it's easy for me to get these off but you can use your uh, weeding tool if it helps, whatever works for you. And line that up on the card, press down firmly. Next side. And then here I'm going to apply glue to this piece and just glue it flat down onto the flap. Happy with it there. Then we'll take this little heart and we'll prop that up in the middle. So there we go, there's our box card. Again, folding flat, 
popping up. Lots of wonderful dimension. You can see through the side. Um, really, really pretty. Just, you know, loads of options. On the page, I've got one that is for unicorns. Again, this template, you can absolutely make it your own. You can do absolutely anything you want with it. If you do make one of these files, I'd love to see it. I've already seen one in the group already, um, but absolutely beautiful cards. And you can imagine, you know, receiving this in the mail, taking it out, and, you know, I can imagine going to visit someone and seeing this prominently displayed on their mantle or somewhere nice but they're going to love it and again you can write your lovely message got any questions well. um, post in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as i can um, if you've got any questions about the template or you're having any trouble with that as well just let me know the other thing i'd like to do before i finish up is just announce a really super fun competition so very happy to announce that our friends at dreaming tree you've all heard me talk about them before their website is 3d svg.com. Um, they're a fabulous company. They have wonderful files, including a lot of box cards. Uh, thoroughly recommend you check it out. Uh, subscribe to their newsletter. They have very generously given me uh, two vouchers for 10 US dollars each that I'm going to be giving away over the next week. So full disclosure, this video is being recorded on the, or you'll be seeing this on the 7th of February. So the competition will close on the 13th of February and Natalie on Valentine's Day during her live will announce um, who the winner was, the winner is. So I'll post details of that competition, but basically I want to see a, what you've done already with um, box cards or something very similar. B, any uh, Dreaming Tree files that you've already created. Um, you can post those in the competition as well. And lastly, if you've not made one before but you'd be super keen to try, take a screen grab from their website and I'll get you, um, you can share um, exactly what you'd like to make. So good luck and we'll announce those winners next week and have a great week. Thank you very much. Bye.